Hey guys, how are we doing? Welcome to another news update here on Buzzing Pattaya. And uh, today's format, I'm going to change it slightly. Um, the, the last few, to be honest with you, have been a bit of doom and gloom. So I want to try and like mix it up a bit. So what I've decided to do and what I will do moving forwards is I'll cover some highlighted topics I think are worth discussing. And also, I'm going to bring to you events. So if you are here or you're thinking of coming over here in the very near future, uh, I'm going to cover some recent, or oh, sorry, some near events that are going to be happening this week. So uh, hopefully we'll end up on a bit more of a high than uh, as it is, which obviously news is a bit more doom and gloom. So today, um, I don't know why I'm laughing because I can't imagine what he went through, but uh, one of the big stories that we've got here at the moment, I say big, but it's just, uh, you know, it's just uh, something that happened. You think, really, did that happen? Uh, there was a Thai American tourist was rushed to a local hospital after reportedly being bitten on his ear by a Thai intoxicated woman at the intersection of Second Road and South Patea. Uh, basically, what it goes on to say is that she jumped onto the, onto the bus and uh, she was drunk. And so basically, she, she says here... Um, Patea City Police arrived at the scene after receiving a report of a Thai woman who reportedly jumped onto a songtail and attacked a male tourist, here we go, by punching him in the mouth, getting him in a headlock and biting off a portion of his ear and swallowing it. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not laughing at the poor bloke because I can imagine the pain it must have caused him, you know, it reminds me of the uh, Evander Holyfield Mike Tyson event. Um, but, you know, what goes on in these people's heads? The dude sat there, he's on the song tower, he's on the bar bus, he's going back to wherever he's living, I guess, or he's on his mind, his own business, and suddenly on comes a muncher, bites his ear off, and not only doesn't even spit it out so they can sew it back on, she just swallows it. Uh, so yeah, so the 55-year-old guy, uh, he was a, a half-Thai American, uh, and uh, yeah, he was uh, found with clear signs of a bite on his right ear. I mean, you know, th this is the thing, though, about out here, is, is you've got to be prepared for the unexpected. Now, I know you don't get on a BART bus expecting you know, you're bitten off, but what I'm trying to say is never let your guard down, guys. Always be aware of your surroundings. Always be aware of what's going on, particularly if you have been out for a night out and, uh, you know, you've had a few too many sherbets. I know it's easier said than done when you are a little bit leathered, but the point being is that when you are out and about, you know, just keep your wits about you because this poor guy... He's just sat there, and suddenly this girl just attacks him randomly. Now, I don't know the ins and outs of it. Obviously, I can only go by what I get here in the news. Uh, and I use the Patea news.com. They're very, very good. Um, they always, always seem to bring the most up-to-date news really rapidly, to be fair. But anyway, I, I use their source of information. So you don't know, was there any underlying issues? Was there anything going on between these two? Or was it generally just a random attack uh, that, you know, this poor guy just sat there and suddenly, bang, in he goes... Uh, the lady was 28 years old and uh, she was uncooperative as she resisted the arrest aggressively and fought the police while the officials were attempting to cuff her on the back of a police truck. Well, I'm guessing if she's got the balls to cut, uh, to bite someone's ear off, I'm guessing she's probably not going to go too, too compliantly. So, yeah, so that poor guy uh, is now, uh, well, I suppose he could, his claim to fame is I'm like Mike Tyson. But, uh, well, Evander Holyfield, wasn't he? Mike Tyson, but who watched that fight incidentally? Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield, he bit his ear off. Man. Uh, right, anyway, so that's that one. So I thought, yeah, quite random, really. Uh, now, I don't know anything about politics. I've never professed to know anything about politics. In all fairness, I don't even want to know anything about politics because although I appreciate it is an important subject, I just feel personally, as an individual, whatever I think, act or do, regarding that kind of thing isn't going to make any difference. However, uh, right now it seems we are going to go through some serious changes as uh, it was just announced very, very recently. It says here the Thai Constitu Constitutional Court's ruling on the suspension of uh, General Prayer as the Prime Minister on Wednesday was an unexpected turn of events for Thai politics as the Prime Minister Prayer seemingly has unshaken power as the country leader and... Moreover, the judges in the quorum were appointed by the Prime Minister himself. So, he's, he's been booted out. Now, I don't know what that effect's going to have on us here, truthfully, because like I say, honestly, you know, without being rude, I just don't follow it. But it's a massive thing for us here. It's going to be a massive thing. Now, I don't know how this works. You know, I don't know whether this would incite riots. I don't know whether this would incite mass un unrest amongst the Thai nationals. I don't really know how all this kind of stuff figures out, but what I do know is that that's a huge, huge step 
uh, for them to take to get rid of him. Now, some of you guys, I'm sure, are very up to speed on what goes on here, and you, you know your politics, you know how it all works. I truthfully don't, like I said. What does it mean, guys? What, what's going to happen? Are, is there going to be mass unrest amongst the country? Who will be in power? Is that going to go back to the army? I, I, don't, I don't know how this works, to be true. But anyway, the point being is um, that that's what they've done. And it goes on to say here, it says, according to the law, Deputy Prime Minister Prawit Wongsawan uh, will be serving as the acting Prime Minister until the court's ruling on Prayer's eight-year ministry term con controversy is made. The exact time for the uh, adjudication... See, it's why I don't follow politics. It's long words, these. Uh, the exact time for the adjudication is debatable. It could take about one week, one month, or as long as two months. So basically what they're saying there, I get, is that within two months, it's going to be job done, wrapped up. See you later, mate. Thanks very much for your term and bye-bye. So this new guy's going to take over. What effect that's going to have on the country, I really don't know. I hope it doesn't cause too many problems. But like I say, guys, I don't know much about it. I'm just bringing you the news. Um, but what do you think? What, what's, is this a good thing? Is it a bad thing? How does it work? What are the implications of what's going on here in the news? I really honestly don't know. I really am as much use as an ashtray on a motorbike. I don't mind admitting it. Now, talking about motorbikes, check this out. So, um, do you know what? The one thing, I love, I love the news that they give. These bloody adverts on these websites do my tits in. Every two seconds, pop up, pop up, pop up. It's like, come on. Uh, anyway, so in the Patea News, they've reported here that over 30 Middle Eastern alleged motorbike racers were arrested in Patea recently. Uh, now, you may or may not be aware, but in the late, in the early hours of the morning, late nights, it's quite quite common, to be honest with you, for Thai guys. Normally, they race around the streets, they'll meet up at random locations, they'll organise a meet, and they'll give it what for down the roads, racing each other, generally speaking, obviously drunk and stuff. But this time, uh, it says here, over 30 Middle Eastern alleged motorbike racers were arrested in Patea, following multiple complaints about them illegally racing motorbikes on main roads and causing disturbances at night. Now, that kind of shocks me a little bit, to be honest with you, because Middle Eastern, are, and again, you know, I would imagine it should have been ties, not Middle Eastern, but apparently so. Um, and that's what, they, that's what they've done. They've been out there and uh, they've arrested these guys. And uh, it goes on, it carries on talking, it says... Uh, the Patea police warned and took legal action against foreign tourists who drove recklessly on a regular basis, but some still repeated the deed as they did not fully understand Thailand's traffic rules. <coughs> now, you know, I've always told you guys, you know, I've done my time, I've been, I've been in front of a wig before and all the rest of it, blah, blah, blah. And of course, you know, you do try to fight, fight your corner, you, too, try, you do try to give it your best shot in front of the wig before he gives you his judgment. But seriously... You know, some still repeated the deed as they did not fully understand Thailand's traffic rules. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Your Honour, I was just giving it warp factor three down the motorway, late at night, drunk, racing my mate, and I thought that would be okay. I didn't realise that was illegal. I mean, it's, come on, guys. You know, If you're going to give yourself a chance, at least give yourself a chance that's, like, viable. Do you know what I mean? Something that the judge might go, well, yeah, that makes sense. But to say that, just crazy. Um... And it goes on to talk about stuff here. It says, uh, the 30, motorcy 30 motorcyclists were arrested around Soy Yensabai, uh, which is just up on the north there. Uh, some reportedly abandoned their bikes and fled on foot as soon as they saw the police officers. And again, you know, like, so they've dropped their bikes off and they've done a runner. Well, <laughs> kiss goodbye to your bike, mate. That's, you know, see you later. Um, and what they're also doing... It goes on again to say here, it says, uh, the Patea police noted that they are also working on identifying the rental shops, renting to these foreign tourists to hold them responsible for renting vehicles without verifying the driegel, dri driegel. The driver is legal and understands road laws in time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's very difficult because when you live here, I may, maybe guys, you know, when you come on holiday, probably you don't really care or you're not interested or so it doesn't actually affect you, but... When you live here, you understand how things work here. You understand the whole <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, they're going to hold them responsible for not understanding the road laws. I mean, seriously, have they had a look at their own nationals driving around? You know, I mean, it's, I don't know. I just think it's a bit comical. But anyway, the point being is that 30 guys are in the deep doo-doos and uh, they will get a whack for that. They'll get a fine, definitely get a fine. Uh, probably a big fine as well, I would imagine. I, I don't know. And obviously, they're going to check all their visas and all the rest of it. So any of them that are on a 
on a, on a no-go or an overstay or whatever, they're going to be in trouble as well. Anyway, so there we go. Now, talking of getting in trouble. Uh, now, you might not know this, but if you go in Walking Street, if you go not the beach side, the other side, there's often little clubs and stuff tucked away, which are only accessible by bridges over the river. We call a river here a clong. There is a river that runs, ironically, you probably don't even know it's existing until you get down towards maybe like Soy 19 area, but there's a river that runs down uh, Walking Street. And for most of it, it's under, under, uh, under the concrete, you wouldn't know it's there, but there are certain sections where there are rivers. Anyway, while they were, uh, while they're in uh, looking at uh, sorting out the local government here and stuff, it seems, well, it not seems, it has been happening where some of these nightclubs have built illegal bridges, which have now been identified. Uh, it's in the news here, and it goes on to say here, bridges illegally built over South Patea Canal near the walking street to be demolished, says the deputy mayor. Um, so there's a couple of Indian nightclubs, and what they've done is they've built illegal bridges uh, allowing you access from Walking Street across to the club rather than going the other way, uh, which, you know, in all fairness, makes perfect sense. It gives them accessibility. However, they've done it without the, uh, the say-so, and now they're in a whole world of trouble. Uh, it carries on to say, according to the monarch, there are three bridges over the canal, but only the one owned by CM Bayshore Hotel was built legally with permission from the Marine Department. Uh, the deputy carried on that the other two bridges were owned by private parties and lacked permission, so they would soon be demolished. One, however, was still being debated in court because the owner had filed an appeal. Now, again, you know, this goes back to like, you, you'll get the current theme here. A lot of things are solved by uh, all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I'm guessing, rightly or wrongly, I don't know, but I'm guessing that perhaps at the time the bridge was built, there were certain people uh, discussing the, uh, the potential problems of not having the required paperwork. It's somehow been uh, worked out that they can carry on, and now it's gonna come back and bite them on the arse, literally, because what will happen is when they do, and they are going to, they've said it quite clearly, they're gonna demolish these bridges. When they do demolish the bridges, it will stop any access completely from the walking street into their club, which, Financially, it's got to have a massive hit, isn't it? You know, and right now, the demographic in Walking Street, right now, there are a lot of Indian uh, tourists here, a lot, huge amounts. So I'm guessing that's going to really hurt them financially because naturally, if you can't get to the nightclub, let's be honest, you're not going to walk all the way down Walking Street, up Beach Road, along South Potato Road, you're just not going to do it. So effectively, they've kind of like almost shut themselves down. So they're going to have to figure out something as well as face the financial implications from the courts because they're going to get fines for that. They'll have to pay for the demolition. Uh, so, yeah, so I feel sorry for some... Well, it's not so much I feel sorry because they know what they're doing, but what I mean is it's a bit of a, a catch-22 because, you know, you, you trust some people to help you out. You financially reward that help, and then later on when, the, when it hits the fan, they're like, sorry, mate, nothing to do with me. You, you knew it was illegal, so uh, som nam na. So, you know, it's a very, very difficult situation, but yeah, that's the situation they're in. Um, and they, you know, they, they, these, it goes on and says, the bridges connect to Indian nightclubs on the other side whose owners have vowed to fight the demolition order in court. How can you do that? You didn't have permission. You just didn't have permission, so how can you fight it? I mean, I guess they're gonna probably hang out the guy that helped them in the first place, but he's just gonna deny it and they're gonna go, yeah, no, no paperwork, mate. Where's your paperwork? So, I don't know. But anyway, so that's the situation they're in. All right, so enough doom and gloom. We've gone through a fair few things here. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just do a positive news update? I'd love to do that. I really would, because it's not that I feel down about what's going on. I mean, some of it's interesting. Hopefully, you know, you found the, the few articles I've discussed today interesting. But it would be nice just to up it, lift it up a bit more. So, on that note... Uh, I want to share with you some events, and what I'm going to do moving forward is every Monday I will show, will share with you what's going on, some events that are coming up uh, in the week, and at least then, if nothing else, you might get a few things. That, oh, I fancy doing that, I'll go and do it. So, to start with, on Thursday, Thursday this week, Thursday this week, uh, Jimmy White is going to be a special guest, and he's going to the Lips Relaxing Lounge Bar. Now, that's located in John Tien. Uh, he's going to go over there and basically they sell tickets. 30 people can play him in a, in a rack of pool. Um, and obviously there'll be entertainment laid on and I'm sure there'll be food and stuff like that. 
So uh, yeah, you can have a VIP snooker evening with Jimmy White on the 1st of September. Now, all of these events I share with you now, I will put in the link in the description below so you can just click it, see what's going on, and if you want to attend, then you know where to go. Um, I've played Jimmy White, I've played Jimmy White and Ken Doherty, I've played them both when they came over here to the Endless Lounge, which used to be in Soy Bacow. sadly that's now no longer uh, when Max owned it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a fun evening. It's nice as well because you get to see the real players. You know, when you watch them on TV, they're very, very serious, obviously. Um, but when, they've, when they're when they away from it, I mean, Jimmy White in particular, uh, those of you that have seen Jimmy out here will know that he likes a few sherbets and he's a, he's a great laugh and, and an incredibly, incredibly talented player. Um, but yeah, so, uh, you know, if that's your kind of thing, get yourself down there. VIP snooker evening with Jimmy White and that's at the Lips Relaxing Lounge Bar in John TM. On the subject of, uh, continuing on the subject there of Paul, uh, on, on Wednesdays and Fridays, the Vagabonds, Vagabond Sports Bar and Grill. Now that's in Kaunoi, used to be called the Black Sheep, used to be the Black Sheep in Kaunoi. Uh, they do a killer pool competition on a Wednesday and a Friday at 7 p.m. Uh, so if you fancy your game and you think you're up for a, a quick win, nip in there, go and have a game of uh, pool and see how you get on, guys. It's always good fun. And if you do like playing pool, uh, we do have some, some sports complexes here. We do have some pool halls here in the city centre. Uh, there's two or three very, very good pool halls. So if you like your game of pool, uh, you're never far away from a pool table, which is great if you like that kind of thing. Now, we always talk about, especially with myself, as you know, I've got very, very high blood pressure. Um, I'm working on it, etc. Anyway, that's another story. So, But in order to relax, in order to calm yourself down and relax, if it's your thing, and I can't imagine it is, but never say never, uh, Unplug and Refresh Morning Yoga is available at the Holiday Inn Pattaya on Saturday. This Saturday at 8.30 until 9.30, you can get yourself down to the morning yoga session at the Holiday Inn on Pattaya Beach Road. That's right at the beach road, and, that's, and it's the far end. It's down by the uh, Naklua end, so if you go to that end, You'll see the Holiday Inn, and they do a one hour, a one hour yoga session where you can go there and just relax. I don't think there's any cost involved. I don't think there is. It doesn't say so. Um, no, it doesn't say any cost. So, but don't hold me to that. I might be wrong. But yeah, if you fancy doing a bit of yoga, and incidentally, you know, if you go down to like say John Tien Beach, if you go to John Tien Beach of an evening. Normally around 6.30, uh, you'll often see groups of uh, Thai ladies doing their stretches, their yoga and stuff like that. You're more than welcome to join in, uh, or you can stand by the side and watch and uh, enjoy how their techniques are and you know the way they do their stretches. But it's available there on Jom Chen, also on Beach Road, normally down by Pattaya Klang, the central Beach Road. Normally they do some uh, stretching and, and yoga there. Uh, so it is readily available, and you're more than welcome to join in, guys. You know, it's, it's not this stigma, oh, I can't do it, I'm a big burly lad. You know, get yourself in there, get your lycra on, let's know, let's see how you get on. Finally, so I want to give a good shout out, he's a good friend of mine, Nick Chapman. Now, Nick Chapman is uh, an ex-MMA uh, fighter, and he's, over the last, I think probably about 18 months now, he's cultured the BKFC, the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championships. Now, I've been to the first two, great events. Uh, he worked so hard, so, so hard to put on the best show he could, and I think he did a fantastic job. The ultimate of what he's achieved now is the fact that Mr. Bacow himself, now if you know about anything to do with Muay Thai fighting, you will know the name Bacow as soon as I mention it. He is like super famous, arguably the most famous uh, Muay Thai fighter in the history of Muay Thai. Um, he's an absolute animal, and he's going to be fighting in the BKFC Thailand 3. And that's going to be, unfortunately, at the Rajadam uh, Stadium up in Bangkok. But it has to be a big venue because he will draw literally so many people. Um, but he's going to fight. He's fighting a guy called Varol. I don't know about any, anything to do with him. Um, but yeah, it's a really cool event. Now, they do have events here in Pattaya. But if you want to go to the Bangkok one, I believe... They are uh, providing transport, so have a look on the link. As I say, all the links for these news and, the, and these events, all the events, sorry, all the events will be in the uh, description down below. Have a look. If you want, it's a great night. As I say, I've been to two. It's good fun. You know, the fights are good. You know, there's some very good quality fighters there. Uh, you'll definitely have an entertaining evening. And as I say, if you haven't, and you know, you're into your mule tie, you're into that, or, be, or your bare knuckle, you get an opportunity this time uh, to see Bacow in action himself. And, uh, you know, sadly, I can't go. 
I've got other prior commitments, but I can imagine it will be a phenomenal fight. I mean, he really is just a legend in the sport. All right, that's it for me, guys. Uh, like I say, I will try and mix up these news. Now, every Monday I'll give you like the talking points and then we'll go into like the events coming up. So at least it gives you something to, to look at. If you are here or you're thinking to come over here, um, I'll, I'll pick out some good events that I think may or may not be of interest to you. And if you have, if you are in a business here and you've got an event and you'd like me to share it, guys, just ping an email, 247 at gmail.com. Happy to share it. Doesn't cost you a single penny. Just let me know what you're doing. And I will include it in the, either the description of the video or if it's a good event, not saying that I won't shout a bad event. <laughs> I'm digging a hole, aren't I? If it's, if it's a, a nice event, then let's, let's shout about it and talk about it. All right, that's it for me, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Please, as always, remember, hit the subscribe button and also the bell icon if you'd like to be notified when I bring out a new video. Uh, have a look on Discord, guys, now. We're, we're getting close to 18,000 members. Uh, all these kind of events and stuff are in there, so it's a great uh, platform for you to find out what's going on, as well as talk to other like-minded people, just like you guys who've got love for this wonderful city here in Pattaya. And if you would like to support the channel and the work that I do, there is a link in the description below. Membership starts from as little as 89 pence a month. All right, thank you very much for watching, guys, and please, as always, wherever you are in the world, stay safe.